here's a photo that I did of the Starry Night. I thought it would be cool to recreate it. I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and took an actual photo if you want it. Here's a photo cutout. Here's a guideline for your sketch. For this project, you'll need a canvas, plaster of Paris, a spackle, painting medium, and plaster knives. You can choose any canvas that you'd like. You don't need an easel, it's optional, and there are different mediums that you can use. The canvas that I'm using is 16 inch by 20 inches. To start off my sketch, I'm just going to draw a vertical line and a horizontal line. My sketch won't be perfect because I'm completely eyeballing everything, but if you'd like, you're more than welcome to use a ruler and map out the orientation of your objects. I'm leaving a photo in the right hand corner of the screen that you can use as a guideline for your sketch. You're more than welcome to take a screenshot. I'll leave it in the corner in case you can. On the left hand side, I'm marking margins to indicate how thick I want each section of my painting to be. I'm dividing my painting by sections. The first thing that I'm going to draw is the very big tree that Van Gogh has in the front of his painting. Again, I'm completely doing this by eye. If you would like, you can break down the tree using a grid, um, or you can use a pencil and give it a try until you get something that you like. Don't be afraid to erase it and start over. It's completely okay. As you draw the tree, it's important to keep in mind the orientation of the complete photo. So when you draw the tree, make sure that you're kind of getting a visual for where each part of the tree will map out because you want it to align with other parts of the painting. For example, the tip of the tree should be almost close to the very top of your canvas because there we're going to put some bush brush strokes to paint the circulation of the wind. The middle of the tree should kind of be in between the hills that we're going to paint in the background and the wind circulation patterns that are on top of the hill. And then almost close to the top of the tree should cover that little gust of wind that is the lightest blue on the painting. These are just some things to keep in mind. Your painting doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a sketch. We'll edit our painting as we go on the way.
Now I'm sketching the big light blue gust of wind that's right behind this cypress tree. It's really important to map out the curves of this gust of wind because it will help you later when we are putting down our plaster mix. Next, I'll be sketching the stars. The reason that I'm doing the stars is so that I can get a better sense of the orientation of the forms and the shapes that I'm going to draw in later. The stars will help give me a little visual of where I might want to place the hills and how I want to do my brush strokes. For now, I'm just drawing a little circle. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just a sketch and later on we'll go back and add more details. I'm going to draw the second section of wind that is underneath that light blue gust of wind. In order to kind of draw the orientation of this second section of wind, I'm going to outline the mountains that are underneath the wind. And remember, your sketch doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to look exactly like the photo in the corner. Once that's done, you're going to go ahead and outline the second set of mountains on the bottom.
Next, there is another set of mountains right on top of the village that I'm going to outline. Remember to leave a little space underneath this section of mountains because that's where we're going to outline the little town. I'm drawing these lines to indicate bushes. These lines, the horizontal lines will indicate landscapes. Next, I'm gonna go in and just draw a little sketch for the mountains that are in the lower left-hand corner. These are mostly just lines. They don't have to be perfect. Just give you a sense of idea of where you will place your plaster mix. I'm going to put some squiggly lines for the bushes. So now we're gonna do a sketch of the town. This part takes the most time, so please be patient. I went ahead and zoomed in on that photo we were using as a guideline so that you can get a better sense of what the town looks like. Again, I'm eyeballing everything. I just took my time and I sketched each building a little at a time.
I'm going to put some squiggly lines for the bushes. This is what your town should look like when you're done. This step is really important. We are going to paint the brush stroke patterns and the circulation patterns of the wind. Try to pay close attention to the photo guideline you have. And you don't have to go in depth, but you're just gonna kind of create general strokes or lines with your utensils of the pattern of the brush stroke that Van Gogh used in his original painting. This will help you when we're putting down our plaster mix to get a good orientation of those brush strokes um, because when we paint over the plaster it would be really hard to make identifying brush strokes just because the plaster is going to stand out. Um, again, this is a textured painting, so it's good to know the orientation of the brush strokes when we put down our plaster.
and here's the finished result. Um, your sketch is all done, and I look forward to the next video.